everyone and welcome to the second how-to guide from Checkmate Tutors relating to how to write effective essays on your EAP course and at university. This is one of a sequence of videos in the EAP series so it will be useful to watch the others available. The link is in the description box below or see our website checkmatetutors.co.uk for further details. Otherwise what is going to be discussed in here and in other lessons might not make complete sense. As a quick recap, in the first lesson, the Berger framework was introduced and it was discussed how each essay you write needs to include several main components that differ depending upon which style of question you are answering. However, we know that no matter what essay you write, your essay must include a title, introduction and conclusion and the style and function of these paragraphs don't really change across the essay types. CRE is an acronym which stands for four particular components of a paragraph that you would use to respond to defend essay tasks, often called argumentative, persuasive or problem and solution essays. As a CRE paragraph is at its very core a standard paragraph with added features, each CRE paragraph needs to include a topic sentence, supporting sentences and a concluding or linking sentence that joins the ideas in one paragraph with the next. However, these individual components overlap with the individual parts of the Cree paragraph, as shown here. Claim. What is the particular point you are making in this particular paragraph? This appears at the beginning of the paragraph. It is the first sentence or so, so it is also the topic sentence. Reason. What is the reason you are making this claim? This also can be considered to be a supporting sentence. Evidence. What evidence do you have to support the claim you are making? This could be in the form of a quotation from the text. This also can be considered to be a supporting sentence. Evaluation. What close analysis of this information can you make and how did this analysis help you to come to the conclusions that you have? This also could be considered to be the linking sentence. I understand that this might be a bit difficult to understand without having an example. So if we go back to our Berger framework again, you'll remember that not including our introduction and conclusion paragraphs, you should have four Cree paragraphs. So the example essay I'm going to show you here using the Cree format is that even though nursery rhymes were used to entertain children, what evidence is there to suggest that these rhymes actually relay information about real events at the time that they were written? So you'll remember from the first video in the series that an essay introduction needs to restate the title but in your own words, not include personal or inclusive pronouns. So I have written, in this essay it will be discussed how despite the fact many people believe Humpty Dumpty and other nursery rhymes have just been used for centuries to entertain children when small, there is actually evidence to suggest that these rhymes actually relay real historic events. Humpty Dumpty wasn't originally a talking egg, he was a huge weapon. John and Marjorie Daw were social stereotypes of people that workers shouldn't try to copy. And Mary Mary Quite Contrary is a reference to a British monarch and the little boy that lives down the lane in Bar Bar Black Sheep relates to a child pushed into poverty due to the unfair taxation system. Here you can see that I have my topic sentence, my supporting sentence and my linking sentence and I have signalled in what order I will discuss in the nursery rhymes I have mentioned. Moving on to our first Cree paragraph then, I have written Even though in children's nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty sits on a wall and is a personified egg, the truth of the matter is that instead of being an egg, according to several military historians, Humpty Dumpty was the name given to a large cannon that sat on a wall at Colchester Castle during the English Civil War. Unfortunately, however, it had a great fall. Therefore, although in the children's rhyme that dates from the late 18th century, the great fall causes a personified egg to suffer horrific injuries. In the story proposed by some military historians, the fall of Humpty Dumpty related to the destruction of the cannon. Whilst there is no definitive evidence to prove this is true, there is some circumstantial evidence to suggest that it is. Cannons during this period often had cast iron exteriors and if they were hit by an object with great force they would crack like a dinner plate hitting the floor and become useless. 
Here, couldn't put Humpty together again reflects the fact that the cannon's now useless. It is likely this is true because in the line where it says all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again, we have to ask ourselves the question, why would king's men or horses be concerned with providing medical attention to an egg that just so happens to be able to talk and sit on a wall? The answer is they wouldn't. The reference to king's men relates to foot soldiers and horses to cavalry, soldiers that rode on horseback. If they were, however, in a castle, protecting it from an invading force, they might be very interested in trying to fix a broken cannon that, up until then, was acting as a very good defence to the attacking forces. Here you can see my claim in yellow, my reason in green, my evidence in indigo, and my evaluation in dark blue. Moving on to the second creed paragraph, then, I have written... In the nursery rhyme Seesaw Marjorie Door, we see a story playing out about a boy called Johnny who will only earn a penny a day and have a new master. Whilst this isn't a true story, it acts as a moral message or parable that warns other young people that if they don't work fast or well enough, they will either lose their job or apprenticeship, hence having a new master, and will earn very little but a penny a day. Whilst a seesaw is a piece of children's play equipment, there is a play on words going on here, as a sawyer is someone that works cutting wood, normally using a big hand saw working in partnership with someone else. Also, Marjorie Dorn might refer to a prostitute or a woman of low moral standing, as in Scots English, a door is a prostitute. Therefore, it could be that Johnny can't work any faster because he is daydreaming about a woman. It could therefore be considered that even though this is nursery rhyme for children, the words act as a warning to people not to behave in a similar way to Johnny, as if they do, they will earn very little money and not do well in life. In the third Cree paragraph, I have written, Mary, Mary, quite contrary, may sound like a rather boring nursery rhyme about a woman called Mary and the odd things she puts in her garden. However, the rhyme is actually more unpleasant than that. It has been argued that this is a passing comment on Mary Queen of Scots being Catholic. England had recently become Protestant and there was a big mistrust of Catholics. There is also a reference to the fact that either her husband was constantly unfaithful to her, potentially with her ladies-in-waiting. Cockle shells is possibly a play on words as it refers to cockhold, usually to a woman being unfaithful to her husband, to a married couple being unfaithful to one another, and it is rumoured that Mary's husband often had affairs with the Queen's ladies-in-waiting, basically her personal assistants, the pretty maids all in a row. Also, silver bells is likely to be a reference to the Catholic Church bells, or at least symbolises the Catholic Church. Whilst these references are open to interpretation, and it could be argued that this is simply a nursery rhyme, and that these connections are a coincidence, Saying such things about a monarch, even though it was written two centuries after her death, would not be considered acceptable, so such references would have to be hidden in this way. In the fourth Cree paragraph, I have written, The final nursery rhyme to be examined that has a dark and real-life edge is Bar Bar Black Sheep. This may sound like a nonsensical story about a talking sheep giving his or her wool willingly to people, but it is arguably an attack on the unfair taxes levied on peasants in medieval England. In medieval England, peasant farmers worked for a master, a rich landowner, and he rented the land that he farmed from the master. Often the peasants would sell his crops and his wool at market and then would use the profit from the sale to pay the master. However, as a result of an expensive war with France, the king created a poll tax which landowners, masters, were made to pay. As a result, the masters increased the rent that the peasants paid, which often forced the peasants to sell more or all of their produce, and this caused them to starve. Although in this rhyme the sheep says that the three bags of wool that he or she can provide will be distributed between the master and the dame, one for the master and one for the dame, some versions of the poem suggest that there is not enough wool and therefore money for the little boy who cries down the lane. Over time, the final lines have been changed to lives down the lane, but the original meaning is clear when it is considered what was going on in England during this time. Peasants were being crushed with crippling taxes, which ultimately led to the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. In more simple terms, if the nursery rhyme is accurate in its representation of the taxation system in England at the time, 66% of the peasants' produce, in this case wool, is given to the landowner or master and church officials. 
This is like you working for a whole day for £100, but paying £66 of this in tax, being left only £33 for yourself. Finally, moving on to the conclusion, which you will remember, must restate what you have demonstrated and how you have done this. Therefore, I have written, in conclusion, it has been demonstrated how often nursery rhymes have multiple layers of meaning. On the surface, they are simple children's rhymes which are used to entertain them, maybe help to develop their speech or lull them to sleep. However, they often provide a commentary on events that have happened in the distant or recent past. For example, Humpty Dumpty might refer to a cannon that was destroyed at Colchester Castle. Cecil Marjorie Dore might refer to lazy apprentices that are doomed to earn low wages if they don't keep their minds off women and on their work. Mary Mary, quite contrary, possibly refers to Mary Queen of Scots and Barbar Black Sheep might refer to the heavy taxation system which often forced peasants into starvation. Please note that this is only an example essay which demonstrates the key elements required in your paragraphs if creating a Cree essay. Also, it is acknowledged that an essay at EAP or university level would contain far more than four Cree paragraphs. However, there are only so many layers in a burger or ingredients that can be added before it becomes ridiculous. Maybe I should have used a Scooby snack sandwich. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel for further educational videos. Also, please check out our website, checkmatetutors.co.uk, for resources to accompany this lesson and also further videos. Goodbye for now.